the story opening with the voiceover, which is, according to the narrator, are real and coexist with regular people. He explains that no one would ever know if someone were a witch at any given time. The narrator makes clear that witches despise children and spend most of their time, devising new strategies for getting rid of them. They have a specific desire to exterminate minorities' children. The narrator starts out by telling his tale of encountering witches as a young boy in Chicago. The narrator describes how his parents, passed away when he was only eight years old, during a snowy period in Chicago. The narrator consequently became the responsibility of his grandmother in Demopolis. The narrator's grandmother places him in the room where his mother spent her, formative years while she departs to prepare hot chocolate while the boy unpacks his belongings and gets settled in his new residence. The narrator's life is difficult at first, and he is reluctant to eat or interact with other kids. The narrator, eventually buys a mouse, which he names Daisy, from grandmother. As he learns new mouse tricks, this helps the narrator break out of his shell and finally start interacting and socializing with his grandmother. To the narrator and his grandmother's surprise, a witch is aware of their rival in Demopolis and is keeping an eye on them through their house window. The next day, the narrator and his grandmother deliver lettuce back to the neighborhood store. The shopkeeper argues that they are fresh and were just brought into the store, but Agatha Hansen still requests fresh leaves, and the keeper complies. Grandmother is incensed that they are past their sell by date. Agatha Hansen agrees when the narrator asks her to buy him some nails, so he can build Daisy a small house, explaining that he must buy the right kind of nails in order to prevent them from rusting. However, as the narrator searches for the nails, a woman who is obviously a witch approaches and offers him a treat. When, his grandmother calls after him, the narrator is compelled to hurry out of the store despite becoming fascinated by the snake curled around the woman's arm. Every time the woman is present, Agatha Hansen develops a cough, and she notices something is wrong. When they get home, the narrator describes what he saw in the store, but his grandmother starts to wonder what it was as soon as they get there. The boy saw a witch, she eventually says. Agatha Hansen shares a childhood memory with the narrator in which she describes seeing her friend Alice turn into a chicken after stealing candy from a witch. Grandmother tells the narrator that they need to leave right away and adds that they're going to a hotel to stay for the night. Witches only prey on the poor, but this hotel is full of wealthy white people, so how can they be sure they can be safe there, the narrator asks. The narrator's grandmother speaks to him about witches and their covens on the way to the hotel. She goes on to say that the Grand High Witch, one of the worst witches ever, is in charge of them. They reach the hotel at last, where the concierge greets them. The narrator's name is revealed to be Charlie as they are greeted at the hotel. A group of women who are, obviously a coven of witches enter the hotel as Charlie and his grandmother are on their way upstairs. The woman Charlie had previously seen in the store is one of them. While Mr. Stringer informs the group's leader that the cat is not welcome, the group objects and wonders what would happen if mice were found at the hotel. Later that evening, Charlie's grandmother describes to him the characteristics of a witch and how to recognize one. They are bald, which they covered up with wigs that give them a rash on their scalps and make them crazy, and they have claws instead of hands that they hid in their gloves. They have no toes, which they cover with shoes, big nostrils to sniff out kids, and arched corners to their mouths, which are frequently covered by makeup. She later explains that she gets a cough every time they are near a witch. The black cat that had previously been spotted with the group of women is seen loitering outside the window of the two as they sleep. The group's leader is revealed to be a witch, and her true face can be seen in the makeup mirror. The following morning, Charlie gives his grandmother a breakfast order and is instructed to visit the beach or keep himself busy all day. He makes his way around the hotel before running into Bruno Jenkins, a young boy who is munching on a chocolate bar. When the group of women who are largely thought to be witches enter the room, he is forced to hide in the room that was reserved for the children's society meeting. The Grand High Witch, who Charlie later determines to be the leader of the witches, authorizes the removal of all human characteristics to reveal the witch characteristics of the witches. The Grand High Witch addresses the group from the front, explaining that each witch will open a candy shop and use it as a front to test out their new mouse maker potion. A drop of the potion, she explains, will turn a kid into a mouse. 
To give an example, the Grand High Witch explains that she laced Bruno Jenkins' chocolate bar with the formula, as a result, he will soon turn into a mouse. Bruno shows up a short while later, and the witches are all present to see him change into a tiny brown mouse. Daisy saves Bruno from being crushed, but the witches quickly apprehend Charlie, force the serum into his ear, and turn him into a mouse. Charlie is then captured. With great difficulty, the three mice manage to escape the witch's grasp and make it to the fourth floor, where Charlie's grandmother Agatha's room is located. The three mice struggle to enter the room after the maid spots them, but they eventually succeed and reveal themselves to Agatha. Charlie explains that the Grand High Witch was responsible for turning them into mice and adds that if they can obtain the serum, they might be able to reverse engineer it to create a treatment. While the Grand High Witch and the other witches are having dinner, the three mice and Agatha come up with a plan to get the serum. They are confident that the Grand High Witch is staying in the room below theirs, and Agatha successfully lowers Charlie there. When the Grand High Witch returns to the room, Charlie is unable to finish getting a bottle of the potion. Nevertheless, he succeeds in getting the potion and starts to climb back to the higher room. However, the Grand High Witch halts the ascension and inquires as to where she has previously seen Agatha. Agatha replies that she has probably been seen in the lobby, but before the witch can respond, Mr. Stringer enters the room carrying a kitten carrier for the Grand High Witch's cat. Agatha and the three mice enter their apartment to try to reverse engineer a cure for the mouse maker potion after the witch has left her room for dinner. Charlie wonders if his grandmother will still love and care for him, to which she agrees. They are unsuccessful, and the three mice accept that they will always be mice. Daisy observes that even though the witches are mice, they can still be defeated. The three decide on a strategy in which Charlie will mix the last of the mouse maker into the witch's soup just before it is served. Charlie is cautioned by Agatha that this is risky, but he begs to defer, insisting that it must be done to save countless children. While Agatha transports the other two mice to the lobby, Charlie goes into the vents. While there, Bruno asks Agatha if she will let his parents know about his current predicament, and she agrees. The three mice and Agatha return to the restaurant to observe what happens after Charlie adds the potion to the soup. Each witch starts to change into a mouse one by one. However, the Grand High Witch chooses not to consume the soup because Agatha, a childhood friend, is occupying her attention. The Grand High Witch is preoccupied with the witches becoming mice and is unaware when Charlie removes her key from her pocket. Agatha enters the Grand High Witch's room and starts collecting all the potions, but, she is stopped by the Grand High Witch entering her room. The witch threatens Agatha, but she is prevented from carrying out her threat when Charlie transforms her into a mouse a short time later. When Agatha opens the Grand High Witch's old chest, she discovers a book with a list of all the witches' names. With this, Agatha and the three mice intend to track down each individual and transform them into mice. Bruno decides it's best to stay with Daisy, Charlie, and Agatha after his parents struggle to comprehend and accept his new life. The three mice continue to live with Agatha for many more years but are unable to change back into humans. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe for more videos, enable your notification settings, and leave a like to support the channel.